Obviously, uh, we're extremely excited to uh, be alive. Again, Alabama, it's just an unbelievable team and a great season. Took everything we had to get that victory. Uh, six guys in double figures uh, really embodied what we've been in my time at UCLA. It's just here in a tournament, Johnny and Jaime have been carrying our scoring. Um, but our resiliency continues to uh, be the key to our team. I give all the credit to our players. Uh, you got to want to. You got to want to win more than the other team. You know, I mean, at, at the end of the day, you got to be just willing to give up your body and everything. And that's what the guys did last night because Alabama is a tremendous basketball team. Obviously, Michigan's going to be a great challenge. Uh, Juwan Howard, Coach Howard, does a great job. Uh, they're extremely efficient. Uh, I mean, they, they carve you up, so uh, it's going to be a different type of game. Obviously, Alabama was unbelievably fast in transition, where uh, you know Michigan's Big Ten basketball physical, but their execution is extremely impressive. Their unselfishness and their execution, their assist-to-turnover ratio in their last five to ten games is unbelievable. So that, and they got seniors, you know, they got great senior guards. So uh, we got our work cut out for us. Thank you, Coach. We'll now begin with questions. Let's start with Ben Bolch of the LA Times. Hey, Coach Cronin. What's up, Ben? You not getting any sleep like me? <laughs> yeah, I could use a few hours. Um, your, your dad has kind of uh, outlasted Sister Jean as the uh, ultimate fan se uh, symbol of this tournament. Uh, have you been able to catch any of the uh, shots of him, like watching replays on television? Uh, what's that meant to you, and, and what has your what was your interaction with him between the end of last game and now? I talked to him about an hour ago. Um, you know, we talk on we uh, obviously since this pandemic, so we we talk on the phone all the time. But um, you know, it's tough. I, I don't see a lot because the films I get, uh, videos I should say, films an old school term uh, that are cut up. You know, so I don't have the dead time of. You know, I have very little of those shots in the stands and all that type of stuff, but. Um, you know, I, I, obviously, it's uh, when when, when uh, to be able to have your father here through throughout all this has been awesome. You know, any, anytime you know, and that just permeates down, right? You know, for all my friends and family, for the families, you know, such a great thing, great event for all, all of our kids, their parents to have them here. It, when we couldn't have fans, you know, at, at our games all season, so uh, see, obviously. Uh, it, it makes it even more special for our guys. The fact that we were we were playing in empty gyms all year to finally have our loved ones at the games. Um, but my dad wouldn't like that reference. You know, he, he he's 79. He thinks he's 59. So we have to <laughs> remind him at times. Do you, do you guys have plans to uh, get together after the tournament's over in person? Uh, I don't really know the rules um, on, on all that, you know, with, with this bubble. But uh, regardless, Ben, he, you know, yeah, yeah, he'll be coming to L.A. Uh, as soon as, uh, you know, as soon as everything's over. And, and you, know, prob you know, I would say, you know, everything's over one way or the other next Monday night. So he'll be in L.A. in short order. I can promise you that. Thank you. Let's take a question from Adam Grossbard of the Orange County Register. Uh, do you guys know as well as anyone what it's like for a team to have to adjust on the fly to losing a key senior? Just what do you think about the way Michigan has played without Isaiah Livers? Uh, we, I don't know if you know this, we did the same thing with Chris Smith. You know, that's why you got other guys on your roster. You know, Brandon John's a good player. Uh, you know, Brown's a good player. Just, you know, all it does is create opportunity for the your guys that uh, that, that are quality players. They just might be – uh, you might just have a little bit better advantage with a Chris Smith or a Livers, but it gives for us, you know, it's been able to give other guys opportunities and their guys are making the most of it. Um, I think that, you know, the longer it goes, uh, you know, the more you're, you know, those particular guys are getting quality minutes instead of shorter minutes, they get better at playing those extended minutes because when you had those, when you had Livers or you had Smith, or we had Smith or they had Livers that, you know, you know they, those guys would play shorter minutes. So that is an adjustment. But I think, you know, they've had a, those guys have had enough games now where they've adjusted. Just right, 
just at uh, this point, Adam, you want you have a follow up? Yeah, just at this point, how much um, game prep have you been able to do with the quick turnaround for Michigan? Me personally, or our team? The team. Teams in film right now with the assistant coaches. Why, uh, you know, I have to fulfill my NCA obligations. Let's take our next question from Sam Conan, Daily Bruin. Hey, Coach. Uh, so just to go back to last night, Tiger, I think it was in the first five minutes, drew three offensive fouls. Was that something that you saw specifically in the game plan with Alabama, or is that just something that you've been working on with him over the course of the season, trying to get him to kind of make those kind of plays defensively when he doesn't really have much of a size advantage or something like that? Well, he doesn't lack for toughness now. You know, he leads us on the team and charges taken. You know, so that not, not a surprise to me. Alabama is a team that plays extremely fast, um, so they get going so fast that if you can, it, it, we 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 felt we could get. You know, Herb. One thing we saw on film study was Herb Jones jumped off one foot a lot because um, he went so hard at the rim. So we 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 felt we could draw some charges on him if if we were in position. Let's take our next question from Nikki K. Spectrum, LA. Hey, Coach, congratulations. Um, I know there's been a lot of attention on your dad in the stands, but your daughter also being there, you guys have a pretty close rapport. What she thought about all of this increased attention and the success you guys have found so far? Well, like any 14-year-old, she's happy that she's on spring break. Um, you know, I, I also have a longtime girlfriend and, and a stepson. It's, they're both, you know, that uh, He's 15. He's out of his mind. He and my brother... Um, you know, if you had the camera on them, it would be pure entertainment uh, because uh, they go absolutely nuts during games. They get so nervous they can't eat before games. But my daughter and I are extremely close, Nikki. Um, you know, um, the, uh, I'm fortunate, you know, the, the, uh, my ex-wife flew in from L.A. for the game. Um, but, you know, my daughter and I spent, you know, half the time, half of her time for years of my life uh, while I was building a program at Cincinnati it was just me and her. Um, you know, sitting on the floor playing every game a dad's ever had to play. You know, no nanny. I never did it that way. It was just me and her. So I did it all, hair, all of it. Um, you know, I perfected, uh, I perfected all, all, all the things a mom could do um, while I was, you know, spent half, the, half of her life where she's just alone with me. So it's nice that she's old enough now she can do her own hair. Um, but I've trained her not to live and die with uh, whether we win or lose, that, uh, you know, I wanted her life to be about her, I think, too, too many times. My opinion, it coaches kids, they can get so wrapped up um, in, in the team and their dad's job. So uh, sometimes you, you can see her, she's got a book up in the stands. <laughs> so to, they put it on, she's liable to be reading a book. She's a voracious reader and, elite, and, a, and a great kid. Uh, but... Uh, it, the you know that's uh, you know a very very hard thing for me you know a lot like you say a lot of us talk about my dad but not you know not being able to see her or hug her but she's happy right now she's on spring break. Wonderful and one more here, here from from me. Um, you knew when you inherited this roster it was going to be about the buy-in from the guys, but how have you seen that buy-in transform not only in into belief but to confidence that that they're capable of. of belonging on this stage? Yeah, it's a great question. You know, the buy-in's been great. Uh, it's just, you know, I think what people want to say is, are they finally bought in when you win a game? You know, they've been great all along, but training takes time. You know, it takes time to build habits um, and, and all kinds of habits, not, not just basketball habits, right? You know, uh, two hands on the floor, two feet on the ball, talking on defense, building toughness. Then I think, in, you know, the last piece for us, particularly this year, because we had no offseason, six months with no team, was not about me. It was about them, you know, really coming together as a group and having to go through so much adversity with losing Chris Smith and then losing Jalen Hill um, and, then get, and being able to stay confident through everything that we've been through uh, and, and leaning on each other. Uh, you know, love is a powerful thing. You know, when you start playing for your teammates instead of yourself, that's when you can achieve special things in team sports. Next question for Bob Wojnowski of the Detroit News.
Bob, unmute yourself and you can deliver your question. All right, let's move on to Andrew Kahn of the Ann Arbor News. Hey, Mick, I've got a three-year-old girl. What, what age do they learn to do their own hair? It was, around, uh, it was around 13, 12. Mm -hmm. I think she knew how to do it, but she, you know, mom, mom just tell her, wash your hair. Um, but, you know, a da dad with his daughter, uh, let's just say I'm not real good at saying no. Sure. Um, let's, okay. it, it, let's just, I'm just going to admit that. So okay. I'm definitely the soft one of the parents. All right, thanks. That's not my official question. Um, many, many of my readers don't know, you know, much about your team aside from whether they, you know, whatever they've seen over these NCAA tournament games. I guess if you wouldn't mind explaining from your perspective, you know, what your team has done better these last couple of weeks than maybe, I don't know, the two months before that. Well, we've been taking care of the ball. Uh, you know, we're shooting a high percentage in the tournament, uh, and I think we're giving up 24% from the three-point line in the NCAA tournament. Um, so our defense has been ratchet. Our defense since the first half against Michigan State, where I, they really executed well and made shots. But since then, our defense has been much better. Um, it's been much more consistent. Um, I think you know we you know the Pac-12 is a really good league, and when we lost got two key guys, it re we had to reinvent ourselves uh, defensively, and we've just learned to play harder and be more consistent with our defensive effort. But that would be, if you look at our numbers in our last four games, our field goal percentage defense is so much better um, than it's been. Similar to Michigan, you know, Michigan did it all year. That's why they're a one seed. Uh, the, you know, they shoot 48 and give up 39. So, but we're a team that can, we got a lot of guys can score the ball. We shoot the ball. You know, we, we've got some guys that can make shots now. We can spread you out. And we have to do that because we're not a powerful team down low other than really Cody Riley. Let's go to Orion Song of the Detroit Free Press. Hey, hey, Mick, I was just wondering what your first impressions are of Franz Wagner as a defender. Um, you know, I really don't have any because then I would give you strategy. <laughs> I apologize for that. But I would say that, you know, again, my impression of being up all night is that uh, Coach Howard does it does an elite job. He doesn't do a good job. He does an elite job. When when your team is as organized as they are on both ends and plays uh, plays as physical and as tough as they do, you know, that, that's a reflection of their coach. Let's go to Connor Brennan from the Michigan Daily. Yeah, Mick, um, kind of going off that, I was just wondering what matchups, if any, kind of keep you up at night or will keep you up um, tonight going into tomorrow? From a Michigan perspective, um, you look, they got they got really good players, <clears throat> so they all everything does, um, you know. But I'll give you one good one, okay? I don't have to play Juwan one on one. Next question for Tracy Pearson. Hey, Mick, what kind of addition has Mike Smith been to that Michigan roster as a grad transfer from? from Columbia and talk a little bit about how the ability to transfer to in college basketball, if you think how it's impacted the sport. Oh, it's impacted the sport immensely and it's going to be crazy, um, you know, going forward. Uh, so, you know, my concern to get on my soapbox about the uh, free transfer uh, where guys aren't sitting out, you know, I think everybody looks at it one way with, they, they shouldn't have to sit out. It's a pen, you know, why penalize the kid? And I totally understand that. You never want to penalize a student athlete. But my concern is, will it negatively affect graduation rates? Because obviously, any I've had multiple guys redshirt and sit out in my career, whether it transfers or I've redshirted a lot of guys at Cincinnati, and every one of them graduated. Um, and when you sit in my chair and you're the person that's trying to help young guys get a job when they're done playing in Europe and assimilate into the workforce and they, they need to have their degree. So it's my hope, um, you know, that the, you know, the thousand guys in a transfer portal that if they end up, if they don't have to sit out do their credits transfer and are they going to get their degree? Cause I think that's the most important thing. Um, not that I, you know, want to want to have them penalized sitting out. I just think it's, it, you know, it, I'm hoping that it's not a, a negative side effect, but um, 
you know, they got a couple of them, Tracy, right? Um, Smith and Brown. Uh, obviously, Smith is he's Columbia, correct? Yes, he is. Yeah, great player. I mean, tremendous player. So, you know, I, I, obviously, you know, uh, you said, well, where would they be without him, right? Um, but that, you know, it, it, they got him, so that doesn't matter. But to be able to get a, a you know, a veteran guy like him <clears throat> that takes, I mean, his assist to turnover ratio is unbelievable. I mean, it's just unbelievable. So, good defender, takes care of the ball. I mean, just a really, really good player. So, um you know, great for the kid. He, you know, he gets to play on the big stage, and it's been great for Michigan. So it's been a win-win for both of them. Seems like that's been one of the few matchups this year for Tiger Campbell. We might uh, be matched up against a guy his own size. <laughs> yeah, it's not all, not likely unless he plays me one-on-one. -on -one. <laughs> Coach, your final question this afternoon comes from Andre Monroe. Coach, after a rocky regular season, into the regular season, what has allowed you guys to kind of kick into another gear and now advance to the eight? We played really well at the end of the season. Um, we just didn't win a few of those games. So, you know, things happen at the end of games, and we played really, really good teams. Two of them are still alive. Uh, you know, so, to, you know, outside of us, two of them are, the, uh, are two of the seven teams alive in college basketball. So, um in my view, we didn't have a rocky end of the season, but, you know, I understand that's how everybody – but I would give you this. Look, you know, our defense is why we're alive and our defense is why we will survive because we got multiple guys that can shoot the ball. So, um, you know, we share it. The guys, you know, the, you know we, we, the guys believe they're aggressive. They're not afraid to pull the trigger, and that's how I want them on the offensive end. Um, you know, the big question is with Michigan's efficiency and their talent, and their play calling, will we will we be able to continue to defend the way we've defended here lately? Thank you very much, Coach. Thank you, man. Coach, we wish you luck tomorrow evening.